Blitz is a well-known basic compiler for the C64 and the C128, and it will also be available on the Commander X16. We'll see some numbers and on-screen live action that compares real-life performance of native and compiled basic programs. And there's even more. How it's working, how to use it, how to tweak it for even more performance, and how Blitz makes it easy for you to separate your basic programs into modules that can be loaded on demand. Also, introducing ReBlitz64, which is basically a JavaScript version of Blitz64 that natively runs inside a browser window. Ok, how does Blitz speed up your programs? The slow thing about Commodore BASIC is the interpreter. When a BASIC program is executed, the source code is parsed in its native form and executed step by step. And the native form of BASIC code is one of the reasons for the slow speed. Now, Blitz actually consists of two components to mitigate this. The first one is the compiler. It transforms the rather verbose basic code into a smaller tokenized form that allows it to be parsed faster. And it does even more, like it keeps a list of all the memory locations that are targets of goto and gosub commands, also making jumps in the program much faster than in native basic. The second component is the runtime. Any Blitz compiled program requires at least 6 kilobytes of space and memory on the C64 and 11 kilobytes on the C128. The compiled BASIC program comes on top of that. Because compiled code only takes about 60% of the space of native BASIC code, there's a break-even point when compiled programs including runtime are smaller than native code. On the C128 this is at about 140 blocks. On the C64 this should be somewhere around the point where native BASIC code takes up 80 blocks. Beyond this size, Blitz programs including the runtime are smaller than their native counterparts. In its most simple form, Blitz programs contain the interpreter right alongside the compiled program. When loading, the user won't recognize any of this. On the C64 the performance increase is about 4 times the original speed, and on the C128 it's even close to 6 times, because the BASIC V7 interpreter tends to be slower than its BASIC V2 counterpart. That means your BASIC programs perform as if they were running on a 4 MHz C64 or even a 12 MHz C128 if your program runs in fast mode. Next I'll run you through the options of compiling a program. When you run the Blitz compiler you're presented with more options than you might have expected. I'll show both the menus of Blitz64 and Blitz128 side by side here. You'll find the links to the download locations in the description. Interesting fact about the C128 version, the program will run in the graphics mode it's loaded in. So when you run it on the 80 column display, you can also put the C128 into fast mode before loading Blitz. That will nearly double the compilation speed. In the menu you can decide between three options. Let's concentrate on the top three on the C128 for a start. Single drive means the compiled program should be written to the same disk as the basic program. This was probably fitting most setups back in the day, but this is also the slowest option when it comes to compile time. Dual drive refers to the Commodore 4040 for example, where two drives reside in the same case. Option 3 is my favorite, two single drives, and I'll pick that. Now you can decide which one is the source drive and which one is the target drive. And this next screen reveals a great feature of Blitz. The compiler doesn't only speed up your programs, it also makes it much easier for you to split your basic programs into multiple modules. I'll show you how this works after we compile the simple program, just to get us started. Before we watch the full compilation process, I'll show you the program we're going to use for comparison here. Let's start with running the program. So we have this little Pac-Man antagonist creature here that moves across the screen horizontally. That took 273 chiffies, that's about 4.5 seconds. The creature is taken from the game Paku Paku, by the way. And this is not a sprite on the VIC-2 chip, this is a soft sprite on the VDC. So this program is displayed on the second display of the C128 and can run in 2 MHz mode. And now I'll walk you through the code real quick so you understand what changes are required for being able to use Blitz BASIC. The code looks much less complicated than you might think. First, we're reading some interesting memory information like from where to where the BASIC program goes into memory. 
I didn't mention that when running the program earlier. The values for the native basic programs are 7169 to 9074. Then we pick the device address this program was loaded from and we use this to load the VDC basic extension. Using a basic extension is a great showcase for a basic compiler, by the way. Then we're issuing some extension commands to set up the VDC chip. We're putting it into bitmap mode, setting it to 64K of memory, etc. And now comes the MD array. That's the monster definition. And it basically defines which pixels to light up in which color to make it look like that cute creature. Then we are writing this data to VRAM and we are doing some pre-calculations. And then comes the loop that moves our soft sprite pixel by pixel across the screen. The VMC command here is the one key command that copies the pixels from the source area in memory to the right place so it looks as if the monster was moving. This is an operation that's running purely inside the VRAM of the VDC chip. You recognize the S equals TI and S equals TI minus S at the end. That's our benchmark to see how long it takes the little rascal to move across the screen. And we had 273 chiffies there. Okay, back to compilation. And what you see here is a crash. Blitz crashed and the C128 automatically enters the machine language monitor in that case. This is not a problem with Blitz128, it's a problem with the VICE emulator. And the crash can also look like this. I ran across this problem with VICE 3.6 and VICE 3.7. I know it still worked with VICE 2.4 though. Unfortunately, emulating the C128 is by far not as mature as emulating the C64 so I will use the C64K emulator for showing this. In the process of compiling, Blitz recognizes any syntax errors in your programs and it also recognizes basic extensions if you happen to use them. As we have seen in the source code, I use the VDC basic extension here. Let's look into the source code what the cause of the syntax error is. And I cheated a bit here. I added double colons to some of the lines since you last saw the code. Lines 140 to 250 actually are keywords from VDC Basic, but Blitz only correctly recognized those that start with double colons. The double colon tells Blitz that this is a call to a Basic extension, so it won't be compiled and at runtime it won't be handled by the Blitz interpreter. Instead, the Blitz runtime will hand it over to the regular Basic interpreter. Now I fix the missing double colons behind the scenes and we're jumping right to the point after successful compilation. Let's take a look at the directory. And we can see two new files here, one starting with c slash and the other one starting with c slash. Now that's a lesson in American versus British spelling. Please refer to what your eyes can see in case I wasn't able to make it clear to your ears. So C slash contains the mappings between basic line numbers and the locations in the Blitz interpreter. So if a compiled program throws an error and says syntax error in 27964, you will list this C program and check which basic line number this would be. If the exact line number is not there, then it's the last one before it. So if the error was shown to be in 27965, your match would still be that of 27964, the basic line number 200. And C slash contains your compiled program, including the Blitz runtime, which is why it is so much bigger than your basic input file. Let's run the compiled version. The animation itself takes 106 chiffies, that's a little bit less than 2 seconds, 106 chiffies is not 4 to 6 times faster than 273 chiffies, right? The reason is the double colon. The loops and so on are all interpreted by Blitz, but the single method call to Commodore Basic acts as a real accelerator, because it has to go through the regular Basic interpreter. But I'll show you proof that Blitz can really make your programs 4 to 6 times faster. This is a project I have been working on for quite some months already. It's a medieval trading simulation and as a true premiere on Commodore 8-bit machines, it comes with real-time aspects. That means 
The game is not purely turn-based, instead time progresses and every second in real life the game clock advances. And every second the game needs to calculate production progress, prices of goods on the marketplace, etc. I also document the progress of that project here on the channel, but so far these videos are only in German, so I apologize to all the international viewers, but I was just not sure if the genre catches a lot of interest in the rest of the world. If you're interested in videos like these, please let me know down in the comments. I made some other videos available in English and German already. I can do the same here. Okay, how can we use this for performance insights? The project started with me being curious if it was even possible to do real time like this in Commodore BASIC. So I started by just creating a game loop that progresses once a second. You can change how fast game time advances within that real second. And the program will just do a plus one on a variable value until the second is reached. And the number of plus one operations within one second serves as our benchmark value. So the program shows how many seconds have passed in real time, then the game speed, how much game time passes during one second real time, the game time that has passed, and the number of plus one operations. We call this value capacity. There is some more details to that and the outcome depends a lot on how much you can optimize that loop, but for comparison purposes it's sufficient to keep the values comparable. So this code has a capacity of 90 on interpreted BASIC V7 at 2 MHz and with Blitz the capacity is 483 and that's a 5.3 time improvement. The MEGA55 shows a capacity of 4008 and the X16 natively performs at about 524 operations. The Z64 wasn't part of that comparison at that point in time, because the game is fundamentally designed around an 80 column screen, something that's not available natively on the Z64. That was around November 2022, and it was great to see that compiled C128 basic code was close to native X16 performance. And I was talking about how great it was if Blitz was available on the X16, Maybe it could beat the native Mega 65 code then. Fast forward to January 2023, the Vic Cavari entered the floor, bringing 80 column capabilities to the C64. So I redid the comparison, this time including Blitz 64. The numbers changed a bit, but again, it's not about the absolute numbers, but the relation between them. Let's assume the 128 represents 100% performance we have a capacity of 527 here. The X16 natively reaches 478 now, which is 90% of the C128's compiled performance. And the reason very likely is that I started using options of Blitz 128 that improved the performance. We'll come to these in a minute. So compiled Blitz 128 code at 2 MHz can outperform the X16's native BASIC at 8 MHz. Interpreted Mega 65 code comes out at 7 times the speed of the 128. And finally the C64. It reaches 71% of the C128's performance. We are comparing 1 MHz to 2 MHz here, so that's kind of interesting. While the speed of the basic interpreter cannot be a factor anymore, it's probably the bank switching that's involved on the C128 that still allows the C64 to get more out of each CPU cycle. One last comparison, I wanted to find out how much updating the screen impacts performance. And this is just about the C128 again. The town screen has next to no updates. Nothing was going on on that screen at the state the project was in at that time. The production screen on the other hand has a lot going on. Regular updates to production progress, products on stock or changes to workers were required. So looking at interpreted versus compiled shows a 6 to 7 times increase in performance with Blitz. And we also see that in interpreted basic updating numbers on the screen affects performance by about 20%, but in Blitz compiled programs only about 5%. That means Blitz compiled programs show even better performance increases when a lot is going on on the screen. But keep in mind that this is text mode only. So much for the numbers, now how can we tweak the Blitz compiler? 
You remember that we had to add the double colon to allow for calling basic extensions. This means Blitz does not always automatically detect what the best option for your program would be. And that's why some optimizations can be done manually. The most important one is for sure the conversation from float to integer variables. Adding ram to asterisks fi i, for example, converts the variable i into an integer during the compilation process. That means even when i is used as a variable in for statements, it will be as fast as integer operations can be, not as slow as float operations are. This option is only supported by Blitz 128, unfortunately not by Blitz 64, but hopefully Blitz on the X16 will support this too. And if you like to use the stop key for debugging purposes, for example to manually check variable values, you should add ram asterisk asterisk se to your code, because the stop key is disabled by default and this directive keeps it enabled. These are just the options I think are most regularly used, please refer to the manual to learn about more of them. Now let's talk about how Blitz makes it easy to split programs into separate modules. On the C64, variable memory is starting right after the last line of your basic code. So when you load a different program that's longer than your initial one, you would overwrite variable values with program code. Blitz64 does what seems to make the most sense. If you pick the option including variable overlays in the compiler, one of the passes checks the length of each module. As a result, each module will just require as much memory as the largest one. So when you load a different module, Blitz will just replace the program code in memory, but will keep all the variables in place. This means all modules will share the same memory constraints. On the C64 this can be a bit tricky. As you might be aware, the pointers to string variable values actually really point into the source code. Integers, floats and arrays are stored in dedicated memory areas, also string variables that are created at runtime. But for this code line, the hello will actually be read from that exact location in the source code. To move the variable out of the source code memory range you'll need to do something like this. By concatenating your original string with an empty one, a string will not point into a location inside of the source code any longer as the result of the concatenate operation will live in the variable space and the variable value will be accessible by other modules as well. So this is really only needed for variable values that are intended to be accessed from other modules. Very often this won't even be the case with your programs. Thanks to Forum64 users trick for explaining the weird behavior and for providing a way to overcome this. No such special handling of strings between modules is required on the C128, as we have dedicated memory banks for program code and for variables, Blitz just replaces the contents of bank 0 when loading a new module, variables stay in bank 1, unchanged and untouched. Loading different modules is as easy as just issuing load or deload commands. After this the new code is in memory and program execution continues at the first line of the new module. So you're really working with independent programs that just have access to the same variables. For dim statements this means they still can only be executed once. Also read statements need to be taken care of. My recommendation is to have a small loader program that takes care of all necessary variable initialization steps. From there load your main program and in the main program you then load submodules and return to the main program as you see fit. I can show you my test program real quick that I used to find out how dealing with modules actually works. We have a loader program here that takes uh, 32 blocks that obviously also contains the blitz runtime. List doesn't work of course and the loader directly loads the main program. In the code we see that we also did the variable initialization before that. On top of the screen it prints the current program name and the previous one. These are values that are just saved in variables by each module itself. The table shows some memory values. These show how memory usage develops over time. On the bottom of the screen the other modules are listed. Let's load module number 1, Tenor, and you can see all the memory values unchanged from the first one, except free top and free space, 
which tells us about the string working area. Also, the screen is not cleared by any of these modules, so the three options on the bottom are still there from the main program. The options above that are the current ones, actually. Now, let's load number three. On top, we see program name and previous program name updated, and we see the memory values filled again. Again, all values are unchanged, except the string ones. So module number three really added a lot of strings. Let's go for option two now. No surprises here. Strings increased a little again, but that's all. Back to the main module now. It fully redraws the grid on top and the screen is a mess now. A clear screen command would have been useful here. Anyway, you see that working with modules is really easy. One more useful thing, if you end your compiled basic program or you interrupt it by pressing stop, you can actually print variable values just as you're used to when working with native basic. Basic programs usually need next to no special care before being compiled with blitz. Nonetheless, I'd like to share some situations where I ran into trouble. And not all of these might be problems with all Blitz versions, so your experience might be a different one. In for loops, you should only have one next statement. Code like this might look familiar to you. Whenever we found that there was nothing left to do in an iteration, we just used the next statement right where we are. I ran into next without four error messages with Blitz 128 because of similar constructs. A better way would be to replace the next statement in the middle with a goto statement that jumps to the last next statement of the loop. Goto is faster with blitz anyway, so I wouldn't expect much of a performance penalty. Functions can also be tricky. Parameters of functions are usually isolated in Commodore Basic. However, they seem to behave a bit different in blitz. It's best to make sure that the name for a parameter is not used as a variable name somewhere else. I usually use cc as parameter names in my functions. It's easy to remember that this can't be a variable name. Now there's one more flavor of the Blitz compiler, reblitz64. This is not an official release, it was created by 1570 using his most basic compiler which can also compile to JavaScript code. And that's what he did with blitz64. Basically, it only allows for the single unified binary use case that bundles your compiled program with the runtime, but that probably covers 99% of all use cases anyways. Nice addition, you can provide the variable names for float integer conversion here, which has the same effect as the fi compiler instruction on Blitz128. Actually, many C64 games, also commercial ones, were written with Commodore Basic back in the 1980s and then compiled by using the Blitz compiler. At least in the German-speaking countries, games like Kaiser, Fugger or Vermeer are some of the most well-known ones. Let me know in the comments if you know about more commercial releases using the Blitz compiler. I am a huge fan of Blitz and I'm very happy to also see this coming to the X16. The great thing is that it just compiles your programs without any major changes required. And Commodore Basic can be a lot of fun, despite its bad reputation among many software developers. With Blitz, at least the performance aspect is invalidated to a very large degree. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the Epid Theory. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.